Hi guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the WL Toys V911 RC helicopter. Now I got this helicopter on Saturday and today is Monday, so I've only had it for two days, but in those two days I think I've had enough time to review this helicopter. This helicopter is affordable, it's easily maintainable, you can do whatever the hell, you can upgrade it, you can maintain it. It's fast, a lot of control, and just one heck of a helicopter. So, without any more talking, let's get down. To All that. right, so you can see my black Sabbath T-shirt. Yeah, it's purple, not blue, by the way. Just for anyone who's actually wondering. Not sure you can tell, but yeah. So, here is the V911. Um, this is the latest uh, version. Um, the difference being is the battery pack. Uh, some owners of the V911 will note that the battery pack was different. Uh, this uses a cage now, and the battery pack sits straight in, doesn't dangle out as it did on previous versions of the V911. Now, the V911 is a four channel RC helicopter, meaning it's got four ways of movement up, down, uh, you can swivel it left right and strafe, left and right. Um, on three-channel helicopters such as the Saima S107G, you can only go up, down, da, da. You can't strafe, oh sorry, you can go forward and backwards as well. You can't go strafing left or right. Now, the difference between this and the Saima is, well, this is four-channel, the Saima is three-channel. This has got a lot more powerful motor on both the rear rotor and the front rotor. This gives it a lot more power, but a lot more instability um, in flight. A lot of people who want to start off in RC helicopters will note, will say that three channel is a lot easier to fly than a four channel, such as the Saima is easier to fly than the V911. But the V911 does offer you a lot more control, a lot more power, and a lot more fun, in my opinion. So let's get on to it. So we can see we've got a single rotor blade design. Uh, the Saima is obviously coaxial, has two ca counter turning blades. This only has one, uh, one turning blade like a normal helicopter. On the rear, you'll note that this has a sideways facing rear rotor blade. The Saima has a upwards facing rear rotor blade that provides a bit more forward thrust um, but then this is more like a traditional helicopter in my opinion rear fin the entire construction is plastic um, I don't know if they haven't actually been able to examine the materials used but a lot if not all of it is pretty much plastic apart from the metal dry shaft rod going through the middle and the screws obviously but uh, yeah, I mean, this is, it's got a brushed motor, and you can see the pinion gear down here that uh, transfers the drive from the motor to the drive shaft to the propellers. And this runs on 120 milliamp hour batteries, which I will get to in a minute. The body shell is, I believe, the poly uh, polyurethane. Um, I can't really tell. It's some sort of hard plastic. Um, very durable. I've crashed this thing at least a hundred times into my kitchen worktops, into uh, the sofa, into the floor, into the ceiling. Um, this thing is very durable for what it is. Um, one top tip I've seen, well, I'll get to the top tips at the end actually, for those who want to fly this. Because um, there are only two, maybe three, that I want to show you. So uh, let's get on to the batteries and the remote. So, there's the remote. I will get to that in a minute. Let me just show you the batteries. They were charging. So, this I'm holding, this black bit I'm holding on to is the charge dock. Um, it uses two red LED indicators, which, uh, when they're on, means charging. When they're off, means it's not char it means it's charged. Um, a lot of people are going to say, why have I got WL Toys on here? Because I didn't buy this from WL Toys. I bought this from Red 5 Gadget Shop. Um, so this is not a branded version of the V911, but it is a V911. So uh, now, <clears throat> to show you what I meant by the latest revision, 
the battery pack uses a different connector, as you can see. So, this is a 120 milliamp hour battery. I do recommend going for the 200, it's inexpensive and will give you a lot more flight time. There are metal upgrades to the V911. Um, oh, you can upgrade the entire rotary assembly of this helicopter and you can upgrade the pinion gear down here to make give it more torque and stability. Um, you can also upgrade the motor <coughs> if you want to go any faster, but you don't really need to. Because it's stupidly fast already. So here is the controller. A traditional controller layout. So on this side you've got your throttle control. Go up and down. Then you've got your uh, turning left right. That turns the helicopter stationary on one axis. Uh, one axis meaning the center axis. Turning it on the center axis. This is your control, so uh, strafe right, strafe left, forward and back. This is your traditional on button. Um, when you turn it on, you get a series of bleeps, and it then pairs itself with the V911. This, these are your trim buttons. Um, you can trim the throttle, you can trim the uh, center axis turning point, you can throttle straight from left and right, you can throttle your forward and back to suit your every need. Now I've not actually trimmed it at all because uh, this thing flies perfectly fine without any trimming. If you need to trim it, it will only be minor adjustments. Down here is an indicator. Um, on this indicator shows you a picture of the helicopter, how much throttle, the position of each stick and your trim levels. Um, then up the top here, this button here, this is not a button by the way, it's just for show. This button here is, uh, is a mode selector, you can have three modes, as far as I'm aware. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that one. So yeah, that is the V911 for uh, everyone who was wondering about the V911. It is, like I said, a fantastic little helicopter. Um, I would recommend this to anyone who's flown a three-channel helicopter like the Cyma. Um, if you haven't flown a three-channel helicopter and this is going to be your first helicopter, then uh, top tips I will give now. First one is getting this thing off the ground. Uh, don't take an age. Uh, that's the one thing you don't want to do. Uh, you don't want to gradually pull it up. What you want to do is ramp the throttle to three quarter, or just ramp it up until you find the helicopter going up. Then you can start controlling it. Because if you try and slowly or incrementally increase the throttle, you'll find it um, being a very unstable on the surface you are trying to take off from. The next part is when crashing it. Uh, this thing can crash day in, day out, 24/7, 365 days a year for eternity, as long as. Every time you crash, you cut the power. Um, if you crash and you are still spinning these blades and the rear one, you will find serious damage not only to the blade but to the motor, to the gears, to the drive shaft, any of the linkages as well. Because these linkages, you know, they're plastic and they're good plastic, but they're again plastic is very fragile in this form factor. So I recommend if you are going to crash it, then please just cut the power. Otherwise, you will uh, you will find damaged blades. It does come with a set of spare blades and a spare tail rotor if you do break it, but this thing is unbelievably um, durable. So, this is the V911. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope it's given you an idea of what to buy, either this or a three channel like the Timer. Um, I will hopefully want to do some upgrades to it in the near future. Um, a video of me flying it may come out, it may not, because I don't have the facilities yet to video myself flying it. Well, I do have the facility, I have a webcam, but uh, not the facility to uh, follow the helicopter. So, yeah, that is my review, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.